All right, hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Regalia of Men and Monarchs. It's a, a turn-based strategy game with, I guess, social link and like kingdom building elements thrown in. Uh, I haven't seen too much of it because I like going into these things blind, but this game looked absolutely gorgeous and I've been waiting for it for months. And it's finally out, so new game. Uh, let's see, so normal story mode. So there, I think there's an endless mode. Um, oh, I see, normal story mode makes completing chapters easier, the objectives will be less taxing, battles can be optionally skipped, enemies deal less damage. No, we're gonna do normal. And, uh, yeah. Might have to mess with the audio settings once we get in. I think it's fully voice acted. Tired of arbitrary sight rules. Hold left L during battle something. Firewalls don't have to be born. Press tab will target and rotate any placeable walls. Spawn by your skills. Ooh, that's exciting. Our story begins in the Rashtil Expanse where the wind races across empty plains. It is a sad, hostile land, a wild frontier and a gateway to lands unknown. In ages past, Rashtil had a heart, the city-state of Ascalia, ruled by the great house Loran. Indeed, over centuries, it came to be known as the gem in the realms, earning respect from all races under the sun. But the Crusades changed that. Attracting the ire of its neighbors, Ascalia was lost to the flames of war. With its marble bones laid to rest, the city has slept ever since, until now. In a distant country, a father lies on his deathbed. For his entire life, he has kept a secret. Yet now, the truth is finally revealed. His only son, Kay, learns that Ascalia belongs to his family, the noble house Lauren. As the sole remaining heir, it is his destiny to face that heritage, to restore the ancestral kingdom. Aided by his two sisters and a trusty bodyguard, young Kay sets out on a journey to the Rashtil Expanse, to Ascalia. The legend is about to be retold. I'm getting like a really big Fire Emblem Final Fantasy Tactics vibe from it, from this game. I'm digging it. Just want to like, mm, a little play. I don't know. I've, I've been waiting for this since like uh, last July, I think. I hate waiting for games. Anyway, motivated by his father's unexpected last words, our hero ventures out into the rational expanse to the kingdom of Sca uh, Ascalia to realize his royal birthright. Okay. Hello, my name is Gwendolyn Loren. I guess I'll have to be your guide here. Do me a favor and try at least to read these pop-ups. Perhaps you'll learn something. You can navigate through dialogue by left-clicking. You can skip cutscenes by pressing space. If you do, you'll be given a brief summary of what happened afterwards. Oh, well that's kind of nice, but I'm not going to be doing it. Anyway, cutscenes that require you to make a choice cannot be skipped in this way. And so, Got it. on a promise made on the father's dying breath, our hero arrives to fulfill his destiny. Oh, they're 3D models. That's neat. We have dumb hair. For great justice! Wait, but that's not our hero. This is our hero. I can't feel my legs. Steal yourself, young master. We're almost at the castle. Right. <laughs> This place is a mess. Not quite what I was expecting. Ah, but surely you aim to restore this place to glory, young master. You are, after all, its rightful ruler. Well... What a terrible, terrible dump. Glorious kingdom, my ass. Remind me, whose idea was it to come here again? Actually, I'm pretty sure both of you insisted. Come on, sis. Isn't this exciting? It's like we're heroes of a book on an adventure or something. <sighs> well, I suppose we may as well try to salvage something from this terrible misunderstanding of a trip. Uh, salvage? Onwards, minions. To the castle. Maybe there's something valuable left, at least. Minions? Well, I like the main character so far. That's a good sign. 
Hate playing these games where the main character is just a whiny oaf. Anyway, the ancestral city turns out to be a little bit more than runes. Our heroes head for the main course, the family castle. Okay, in free roaming scenes like this one, you have direct control over K. Click anywhere on the screen to walk. Click twice to run instead. Click on the character, approach them, and start a conversation. You can exit all free roaming scenes by clicking on the door icon. To pan the camera, middle click, drag the mouse. You marked all the exits on the scene with a large gold arrow. Think you can handle it? Don't get lost now. In Regalia, you can only save your game in fixed spots. Your town is one of those. You can save your game progress from the settings menu. Clicking on the gear icon in the upper right corner of the screen or by pressing escape will allow you to access the appropriate option. There are other places where you can save your game, but we'll explain those later. For now, try to exit your current screen. Okay, so let's talk to Elaine. Okay, so this part isn't voice acted. One may complain, but she was very keen on coming here too, right? <laughs> It'll be okay, trust me. Good things are rarely easy. Alright, so, uh, I figure I should probably mention this. This, uh, Shelf will be joining me, possibly for the whole game, or possibly just for the voice acted segments, depending on how long they are. Anyway, uh... Well, you mean the non-voice acted yeah, segments? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just like the art style and everything. Oh, I'm it's absolutely what, gorgeous. What's going to happen? This reminds me actually of Grand Kingdom, so we can go to the town, to the town, or to the town. Different uh, parts of town. I don't think we have much of a choice. All right, some abilities can never miss ever. Use that against particularly nimble enemies. Okay, so we've so got. So they're at the castle, and she's at the town square. All right. There is no cow level. Ah. Cow? It's a Diablo reference. Not much of an improvement. Ugh. Don't remind me. Loot and scoot, boys. Well, at least she has her priorities straight. Look, young master. Such exquisite pieces of armor. <laughs> Aha! No, wait. Rat poop. I must say, the inhabitants must have had a remarkable grasp on... What's this, big bro? Just some tea I found in a pot nearby. Tastes like dust and ashes, but, you know, <laughs> it's still tea, right? <laughs> Ew. Wow. How is that stuff? Oh. Wait, what? You do realize that you just poured stuff from an urn. As in, literal ashes. Oh, shit. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Who dares? It's the old ghost, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably their, like, grandfather. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. You, the one with the dire need of a haircut. What have you done to my remains? Well, apparently, I have drank them. This is an outrage! My rest interrupted! My remains defiled! Prepare for severe punishment! Ah! An ending in digestion? How are you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Grandpa Ghost is the best! I... what? Don't go what on me, son. You're the one who drank my ashes, so you know some manners, eh? Maybe an introduction. I. That a thing? Do you often wander into other fellas' households, slurping their debtors? Hmm. This is Kay of House Lauren, heir apparent to this revered establishment. Ghost or no, respect is in order. Uh, but. Oh. <laughs> So you're a Lauren, Sonny? Funny story. That would make me your grandfather. The Sinoralis of House Lauren, at your service. Though I imagine being dead limits my options. Is this real life? So, heir apparent, is it? Good for you. I thought you'd be taller. And bulkier. And, you know, smarter. And ashy stuff? Big no-no. Rocky start, my boy. Look. Anyway, since I'm already here, might as well help you get right on track, hmm? Fetch me the customer. Oh, joy. I don't think there's one left around. Bull 
shit, son. We Lorans are proud folk. And this... This... Uh... Uh... Just what the hell happened here? This place is a dump! At least he agrees, of all people. Seriously, what have you people done to the castle? Is it that bad? What about the village? This ain't right. This ain't right at all. But you're the heir. You'll be putting all of this back together? Well, indeed, noble spirit. As we live and breathe, we shall see to it that young master will bring, uh, uh... Mm. Look, I'm sorry about the ashes. And I appreciate the offer. I really do. But we came here looking for a family estate, not ghosts and ruins. Nobody expected this. This is crazy. But you're the heir. Sorry, this just won't work out. But I must... Wait, where are you going? Kay. Kay. Wait, you lot! I ain't done with you! Ugh. Kids these days! A particularly dumb decision summons the ghost of Kay's grandfather, who urges Kay to rebuild the kingdom. Overwhelmed by this sudden responsibility, Kay refuses, leaving the castle to collect his thoughts. Oh, hey guys. What was that all about? I needed to collect my thoughts. Sure looked like a temper tantrum to me. It's just too much, you know? One day we're heirs to an ancient city, then it turns out that there's nothing left standing and that the whole errand was pointless. And last but not least, there's a crazy ghost who wants us, me, to rebuild this place as if I'm some sort of king. You do know you kind of stepped into that one yourself. So what is your plan, young master? We're leaving this place. But... but we're not heroes. We may be of House Lauren, but so what? This place is ancient history, nothing more. Did someone say House Lauren? Well met. With whom do I have the pleasure? How rude to demand the name of another before introducing oneself. Very well. The lady has a point. Walter Crucy, I represent the Furtive Union. The Furtive Union? I take it you are not familiar with our organization, then. Speaking concisely, we are men of business. Sometimes we invest, sometimes we lend. But mostly, we reclaim goods deemed impossible to vindicate. So you're debt collectors? Correct, more or less. But that still leaves us in the dark over your identity. Or your rather puzzling presence in this God's forsaken place. You were not supposed to be here. Well, I do not like your tone. This is Kay, heir to House Lauren, inheritor of Ascalia, the rightful master of this city. If anyone remains the intruder, it is your entourage, Mr. Crucy. Is that true? You are the heir, young man? By the gods, Griffith. You would doubt our word? Okay. I'm worried that suddenly you're gonna have to pay back this guy or something I because like their you... little bowler hats. I noticed those bowler they hats. They weren't stupid. Businessmen, you know. Yeah, uh, I get the feeling we're like severely in debt to them or something like it, that. He's like, oh, I was just coming here to collect a debt. And, uh, well, now that you're the heir, huh? Also, this guy is completely Alan Shazar from oh, Escaflone. yeah, he is. Except for slightly less suave and a little bit more stupid, which is saying stuff. Anyway. Interesting. That is an excellent turn of events. We shall kill two birds with one stone. Oh? Regretfully, I have to inform you that your holdings and possessions back home have been... confiscated. What? What? How the hell? If you truly are Kay of House Lauren, then by virtue of law, you have also inherited the obligations placed upon this land. Monetary obligations. Obligations? 
In short, your ancestors have left you a rather staggering debt, my lord. Show me. What? How is that even possible? The Zeros need a separate sticker to fit on paper. I am afraid that for all their prestige and renown, your grandsires appear to have been rather indulgent people, my lord. Shall we proceed with the execution? But... but I don't have that kind of money. That is unfortunate. Also ironic, given their wealth of history here. I can't believe it. All of this, the whole city, lost because of a debt? Why? It got destroyed during the Crusades. The debt, you see, is an older development. The Crusades? But enough angsting over history. Business first. Let me introduce you to my assistants. Ah! Mr. Knight, what are you doing? You will not harm them. Please, we are civilized people. Punching, albeit enjoyable, would give us little benefit, at least for now. The truth remains, however, that you indeed seem unable to procure funds. Thus, I propose a deal. A deal? You are a king right now, young man, of sorts. Your title still has hold in brash till people respect it, and respect is money. I propose you seize what chance you have, rebuild this city of yours, revitalize it. Is this a trick? <laughs> Why would it be? Consider it an investment of trust on our part. And if I refuse? You seem to have misunderstood my position, my lord. It is not an if, not a but, not a maybe. Do it, or payment shall be extracted through different means. Considerably less pleasurable, if I may add. <laughs> Big bro. I am a reasonable man. We shall split the debts into parts, each to be paid in regular intervals. Would that be acceptable? You're asking us to do the impossible. No, we are asking you to do the improbable, but this is a chance, no? One surely worth taking. I urge you to act as soon as possible. Time is money, and you cannot afford to waste it, my lord. And this is our cue to leave. The accord has been reached, nothing else remains to be said. Soon, I will contact you through mail. I bid you farewell. Oh jeez, their faces. But this is insane! The deadline is approaching. Tick tock, tick tock. Are you alright, big bro? Give me a minute. Okay. Thoughts? Isn't it obvious? It's not like we have any other options. Yeah. Did... Did they really sell Dad's estate? That's evil! Does it change anything? Wasn't Master K planning to make his ancestors proud anyway? Well, technically... Uh, you know what, never mind. No, go on! How do you feel about this? I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like this one bit. Aside from the debt thing, whoever or whatever should be doing spring cleaning here, it's not me. Not us. But then comes the debt thing. And we don't really have any choice anymore. I hate it, but we must. Damn it. This is so depressing. Annoying, more like. What's the big deal? Can't hurt to try. And you have that alleged grandfather to help us, right? Oh, that's true. I have completely forgotten about him. I do not expect him to be happy about the debt. Uh, no, he won't be. But that's not going to be the worst part of the conversation. Ah, uh, oh well. To the castle, then. Off we go to beg and moan. Yay. I mean, it's the grandfather's debt, so... 
Our distraught hero is visited by the ominous Mr. Crucy, who reveals that Kay's ancestors have accumulated a massive debt over the centuries. The debt collector poses an ultimatum, restore the kingdom to pay off the debt or perish in anonymity. Ignominy? <laughs> his hands seemingly tied, Cade decides to confer with his ghostly grandfather once more. And that's how it went. Hmm. Nasty buggers, them FUs. So it looks like you'll be needing my help after all, eh? Ah, oh. <laughs> funny how it works. Yes, the irony is not lost on us. Just tell me what to do. Let me see. Hmm. A king ain't a king with no people to lord over, yeah? So that's the first thing. Get someone to move here. Any pair of hands would be a resource right now. Also, perhaps it'd be worth looking into that whole debt business, you know? What do you mean? That loan shark ain't exactly what I'd call the most trustworthy person around. What you got was scraps, and we need facts, writs, documents, the whole story, my boy. Call me a sentimental dead sod, but I can't imagine my kiddos ruining the kingdom over money. Crucy mentioned wars. Crusades. There you go. Something worth looking into, hmm? Ah, uh, and Sonny, you're not alone. Those sisters of yours? That stern-looking chap? You're all House Lauren. Do not try to think everything through by yourself. You have four heads. Use them. And there's you. Ah, oh, right. About that. I'm hopping in. Huh? Don't harm me, boy. Like it or not, technically, I'm inside you now. Ew. And this means our fates are tied, for now. And believe me, you'll need me. Oh, yes. In other words, you'll be lugging me around wherever you go. Oh, gods. Oh, just kidding. But I appreciate the enthusiasm. My spirit is bound to these walls. Likely for good. Bloody shame, that. I would love to see how the world's changed over all these centuries. What was it like back then, Grandpa? Eh, uh, probably nicer if you don't count the gnomes. I'll tell you some other time. Cool! The gnomes? But the gnomes are still around. They are? <sighs> I knew it! Them business-savvy midgets! They don't play you faster than a gambler with a stacked deck! That's great! Irritating and bipolar, I see. Gwen? Now, I may be a racist old codger who has mixed feelings about them gnomes, but they know their stuff, and you do need their stuff. Which is? Surely you've heard. Pretty much everything they touch turns to gold. Then you need gold, no? You're gonna need trade routes, and they're born tradesmen, sonny. If anyone can help you make the coin flow again, it's them. As much as it cramps my spectral butt to say so. I see. Right. Time to get to work. Oh, one more thing. Before you do anything, Sonny, have you, uh, taken a good look around? Castle's a mess. Unless you want to be king for dust mites, I'd suggest the four of you grab a mop and declutter it. No way in hell I'm going to clean. I, uh, I'm allergic to dust. Gee, thanks, guys. <laughs> With no alternatives in sight, the family resolves to restore Ascalia, if only to get rid of Crucy. With their grandfather's suggestion, Kay and Griffith descend on the uh, to the castle's less than charming rooms to do some spring cleaning. What exactly will we be cleaning? Oh, you know, simple things: spider webs, rubble, dust mites. Oof. Whoa! By the gods, this one's huge and ugly. Perhaps it's the broodmother of those things? I wonder if it flies. Are we really talking about this right now? Just hit it! Hit it! <laughs> Ambush, our heroes are attacked by the skittering denizens of the castle. Wow, these loading screens are fast. Defeat all enemies. Alright, this is your first uh, list of available characters. Click on a portrait, then click on a beauty. Bleh, blue tile, blue tile to deploy them. Okay, so we're just gonna do boop and boop and finish. Hey! -o! <laughs> okay. All right. During their activation, each combatant can each move and perform an action in any order. 
Combatants can move multiple times during an activation as long as they have movement points remaining. However, combatants can perform only one action per activation. It means either using skill or an item. When you're done, end case activation by pressing spacebar. Ignore all the bells and whistles for now. Focus on moving your characters forward. Perhaps using a skill or two will get uh, to get the feel of them. Okay, so we got skills. Hovering over skill icons will display extensive information about the highlighted skill as its damage, range, cooldown period, and possible ongoing effects. You can cancel your selection by right click. Okay, so we've got command. Bang. Rend, inspire, and pull yourself together. So which... he's sort of like the the paragon. Yeah. Okay, we've also got these things. End a activation, use an item, undo well, move. Well, can he shoot that rat in, head in front yes. of him? Okay. So damage, weakened, and there's something about Battle Tide. Here we go. It generates one stack of Battle Tide whenever K uses a skill. At three stacks, all stacks are consumed, granting either an empowered invasion, Aegis, or fleet. Chosen randomly. To a random ally for two turns. Yeah, so he's kind of a, a support buffer. Okay, so before we go too far, I want to go into settings. music is pretty loud. It's really loud. I was actually going to turn it down substantially, because uh, I was actually having trouble hearing... Also, those rats have multiple limbs? They're dust mites. They're not rats. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, no. It's cute. Okay, so we end his activation. Ah! They, they look like rats to me. I mean, they've got six eyes. <laughs> so they're kind of rats. They should have made them dust bunnies if they really wanted to go for the rodent mite side. mixture, if you know what okay, I mean. Okay, so he's got dynamic entry. Moves to the target if it's an enemy, if it's an ally. Okay, so we can either... Uh, Damage an enemy or, or uh, buff an ally. Taunted, two turns, blinded to the target enemy. Okay, so we're gonna move up. And we're gonna do fleet. Or dynamic entry. Why did we that hit the yet. Elizabeth, the brood mo mother? <laughs> Liberda rat, rat, rat tick. Oh, they're ticks. Rat the rat ticks. ticks. I uh. get it. Okay, and we don't have to worry about facing. Uh, blitz. Oh! Action point. How do we see action points? Three movement points whenever Griffith defeats an enemy. Oh, that's useful. Do Let's see if we can do falter. blitz. That means you get to use another attack on that one next to you? Yeah, so we can do... I like this one. Uh, apply Santa to for two turns and your blinded for two turns. Your mother was a hamster. But yeah, your mother was a hamster. That's adorable. <laughs> uh, so we can do pinpoint strike. Yeah, let's just do pinpoint strike on it. Yeah, I don't know how action points work. Because that's shield. No, I have no idea where it's listed. Maybe it was, oh, authority points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this. Uh, so authority points is used to give you the edge in combat. Authority has two uses. It can be used at the cost of one point to gain the blitz effect on the currently active combatant. Well, let's them use another skill on the same turn. It can be used as the ultimate skill resource at the cost of three points. And we can hold up to five at a time. And I think we generate them largely with the main character for the time being. Oh, it had a range attack. Yep. Do you hear the voices too? Oh, shit. I skipped his turn by accident. Okay, first battle. Tutorial, health and shields. Okay, health cannot be replenished during combat in any way. Instead, combatants gain temporary shields, which allow them to absorb... Incoming it damage. Since shields are depleted before health, it's important to generate them preemptively using skills and items. Have I heard that before? For great justice? Yeah, for great justice uh, is in multiple things, including like World of Warcraft and whatnot. Okay. Beware though, there are numerous ways to bypass shields, and available mostly to enemies. Hey, life ain't fair. What? For great ju for great justice is a shout. Mm hmm Though I'm not entirely sure. Okay, uh, so it's Griffith's turn. Oh, is that an arc? Yeah, Crescent yes. Strike is a like a circular swing. Uh oh. Do not falter. Well, uh, I guess Strike I'm just gonna kill this guy. Yeah. It looks like every time we kill one, one of the the rat rat ticks. Um. Every time we kill a rat tick, it uh, hurts the brood mother for some reason. And I'm gonna keep my hand far away from the space bar button. Death and fate have taken the stage. I, I wonder go. if the um. Okay, here we go. Ongoing effects. Skills may apply positive or negative effects to their targets. Passive abilities are special types of ongoing effects unique to each combatant. They're infinite in duration, typically reflect a combatant's playstyle. 
Okay, so we know about that. Let's move over here. So we got Rend. Okay. Uh, so it does 95% of base damage as physical to target and has a 50% chance of slowing them. A sword makes a perfect punchline to an argument, provided it's used sparingly. Command. Mm -hmm. Uh, 20% of maximum shield, so target if used on an ally. Okay. 70, weakened. Inspire. Empowered an ally when they activate. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just take a swing at this guy. Take this. Or miss. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Not yet. I'm gonna just use an- uh, wait, what? There's an obstruction in the way. Okay, it... let me take a look at this. Oh. You have to be facing the right direction as well? No, 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 no. I, I, I create a banner. Ah, uh -huh. Um, and so that, that's how that works. So there's a banner on the ground and we get Inspire. It sneezes on you? Yeah. Ew. They've been sneezing this whole time. Your side. Which is kind of amusing. Okay, challenge. Now let's just do pinpoint strike. Oh, he's gonna say that every single time, isn't he? <laughs> That's concerning. Okay, well, we're probably fine. Rid of excess leads to the Palace of Wisdom. That's probably just for the every turn. Turn four, turn five. Yeah, turn six. I'm curious if it's gonna have the uh, the same. Okay, and let's kill her. I don't know how we're getting the authority points, but. On to the next one. I'm not against using them con uh, constantly. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, actually. <laughs> is it can I just... difficult to see the rat? Yeah. Uh, can I like do Q and E? Sometimes you can rotate in these games. No. Can I just hit the rat? No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, unfortunately. It's standing so right the... next to you. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Um. So he doesn't have a melee attack. Oh, it has another turn to. Yeah. So I guess I'm just gonna use a. I'm just gonna shoot it in melee. It's close enough. Um, but yeah, since the backgrounds and environments are painted and not 3D objects, uh, you can't rotate the camera. Which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Okay, now I can hit the thing. It dodged? Yeah. Wow. I'm not done yet! There's no line of sight to the target. What do you mean there's no line of sight to the target? You're standing right next to yeah, it. Yeah, the rat is blocking it though. Ah, uh, I yeah. see. You're actually trying to buff up Griffith. Yeah. I was just trying to do something. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. These enemies do justice. a lot of damage. All right. Uh, pinpoint strike. Yeah. So if you see, there's a percent chance above the uh, the hit and the damage. So uh, it seems like most moves have like a twenty percent ch chance to miss. Maybe it's based on positioning and, like, rotation. I don't know. Your traveling party will not always approve of your decisions during text adventures. Remember that is something. Okay, 30 points while sparse can turn the tide up of combat. You can spend them to gain extra attacks with blitz or power up your ultimate abilities. Hmm. What is this place? An armory? This is probably a character. <laughs> well, well. I think you should look at this, sire. Sire? Sire. Uh, what? Uh, okay. Coming. What did you find? Wait, a sketch of House Lauren's family tree? That's exactly what we need! Oh, but it's incomplete. Damaged. It's a start, no? What do you mean? Look at it as one looks at a foundation. With this, you get a tangible base to build upon. Questions to answer, people to look for, names to check, a direction, so to speak, which is exactly what we need right now. I am sure that eventually we will be able to fill the blanks ourselves. Uh, you're right. Let's show this to the girls, Griffith. Agreed. And as unenthusiastic as they were, let us hope they have cleaned up the main hall. I'm sure Grandfather would nag them to death otherwise. Oh, by the way, before we go... This seems out of place. Indeed, 
It does not resemble any of the other armors around the castle. Thoughts? It seems Lord Amarian in origin. Sun symbols everywhere, plenty of ornamentations, highly impractical, perhaps used for ceremonial reasons. In all honesty, it is hard to tell sometimes. Lordamar's knights like it gaudy. Lordamar? The kingdom of Lordamar to the east? Militant sun worshippers? The very same, yes. Why would a Lordamarian armor be locked in here? We're in Rashtil. That's far, far away. A gift from a king, perhaps. Hmm, could be. Uh, think we should do something with it? If it doesn't involve Lady Gwen pawning it off for money, then yes. I was thinking more along the lines of main hall decoration, moving it somewhere more presentable. I do not see why not. All right, hop to it. Sometimes I think you and your sisters are more alike than you imagine, young master. After stumbling upon the castle armory, our heroes retrieve an incomplete family tree of House Loren. While the information it presents is scarce, it gives them a solid base to start their inquiry into what exactly happened to Escalia. Additionally, it appears that someone, somehow, has left behind a suspicious suit of golden armor. Aw, oh, looks nice now. Yeah. Also, that family tree is much bigger. Hey, you're back! How did it go? To be honest, we didn't really clean much, but we found this. What's that? Looks like a family tree. Our family tree, I assume. Yeah. You know, this may actually be useful. We're going to need stuff like this if we want to get to the bottom of this debt business. Our thoughts exactly. Ho oh, ho ho, but it's more than that. You can't be narrow-minded in this, boy. It's not just about who borrowed what, you know? If you want to be a king, you need legitimacy. And that means history, lineage, solid facts, everything that constitutes rulership. You may frown upon this, Sonny, but there are folks who buy into this more than they buy into money. It's a chunk of knowledge that will help you in the long run. I agree. If we are to be nobility, we need the bearings of nobility. And if it helps us on more than one front, all the better. But I can't be running around dusting off Chronicles. There are things to do right here, right now. You're not alone in this, big bro. Remember? Let me handle the... Mm, boring ancestry stuff. I'll be digging into documents and family affairs while you do your thing. Which I assume will involve whacking uglies. What about me? What about you? I want to help too! How about no? I think that's an excellent idea. I'd appreciate it if you two would work on this together. Are you serious? You heard him. Oh, come on, sis. Why the long face? It's going to be fun. Ah, also, I bet your duties will take you all over Rashtil, Sonny. Methinks you should also ask the nice ladies over here to look after the city while you're away. All in all, you're in this together, hmm? As a family. So are you, old fart. Ho oh, ho ho, but I'm dead already. Can I trust you with this, then? Leave it to us. What about you, Griffith? You know my answer. I swore an oath on your father's dying breath that I would not leave your side. I shall follow you in the field should you call me to do so. Very well. What's our next step? I may have a thing, Kay. While you guys were gone, I took a sightseeing trip around the city. Turns out there are still some people living in the area. Really? Yep. There's an inn near the crossroads not far away from the gates. I saw light coming from inside, so they're most likely still in business. Here, big bro, I'll show you on the map. Ho ho ho, that's excellent news. If anything, you should go and introduce yourself. You're going to be their ruler. Ugh, mingling with peasants. What exactly will this accomplish? Now, now, young lady, a king is nothing without his subjects. Any fool may claim a pile of rubble, but without people, you're just an empty title. Or a tyrant. No, oh, my boy, one cannot rule in a vacuum. You need to be a person. Their person, not just a face on the throne. You may obtain riches and inherit lands, but in the end, true wealth lies in the hearts and minds of your people. 
You are only as powerful as the respect you command. Never forget this. Respect of my people. Ah, at last! The Patriarch speaks my language. Duty, service, loyalty. We shall forge bonds everlasting. This, I swear. Uh, yeah, what he said. All right, I'm off to the inn. Griffith? At your side. Let's go then. An agreement is made. Kay and Griffith will handle any issues involving the adventuring away team. Well, Gwen and Ellie will look into look deeper into the family's past and tackle day-to-day -day administration. First things first, however, turns out someone's still living in the city's inn. All right, so we've got the placeholder in the town square game ah, menu. I feel like I'm watching a television show. Is it a good television show or is it a bad one? <laughs> well, for a game, it's just very exposition heavy. It is very exposition heavy for an indie and, game. And like, I could deal with it if it were one of the games where, like, we did the dialogue. But and I love the voice acting. It's just that it, I feel like we're sitting there for several minutes on end doing nothing. There, there is a lot of. I mean, it is also the beginning of the game. I'm also giving it a pass because it's actually really well written. I like oh, pretty I much everything the grandfather says. Well, you just like grandfather characters. Well, yeah, in but also like he was making some pretty great jokes there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see. So we've got. I really like this UI and this map. I assume as we go along, these various structures will probably Open be up. less broken looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and eventually we'll have like an actually nice looking castle. Because uh, this is supposed to have city building elements and but stuff like that. Are we ever going to be going beyond the castle walls, oh, or just building up the castle? No, we're we're doing more than just building up the castle. So we have quests. Go to the inn. We unlock a uh, perk brawler. Perk quick thinking. Morph loud and clear. Oh, command can now be used regardless of line of sight to the target. Mm -hmm. That'd be helpful. Okay. Oh, so there's like cost one. So there's like uh, some kind of level leveling system here. Uh huh. So completing quests. Okay. So characters. Character sheet displays information about the chosen character. So while certain attribute values may increase with experience levels, it is up to you to fill the gaps with proper proper customization. Pressing left click on weapon and trinket slots allows you to switch their equipment. Weapon types are strictly assigned to specific characters. Trinkets are universal and can be equipped by anyone. Each character can be further modified by perks. They're shared between all your characters. Can be unlocked through various in-game activities. Like personal bonds, diplomacy, and so so on. Pressing left click on an empty perk slot will open the perk menu. Has a fixed equipment cost, representing the amount of perk slots it will take. More perk slots are gained with experience levels. A level up increases the amount of available slots by one. Okay, so I can change all of them here. Experience level. Oh, instead of individual levels up, level ups, your party gains experience as a whole. Okay, so we don't have any perks, but we have one slot. But you will be getting perks when you go to the inn. Yeah, as soon as we go to the inn. And we don't have any trinkets, we don't have any weapons, inventory, quests, we already looked at that. Personal bonds. Each character has days when you can pursue their personal bond stories. This is indicated by an exclamation mark over their heads. By gaining relationship points and advancing in personal bond levels, you unlock unique benefits related to the character in question. The most common way of gaining BP, or RP, sorry, is through spending time with characters. To do so, choose these spend time option for the character's conversation menu. Whenever you have enough points to advance to a next personal bond level, a unique storyline cutscene will trigger. During these cutscenes, you will be able to influence Kay's choices, possibly gaining extra RP in the process. So that is very much um, mm -hmm. a persona thing. So currently we just have Griffith. Well, so, isn't that something that you would also do in Bioware games, but to a lesser extent? To a lesser extent, but this is very, very Persona. Like, different days where you can hang out with them and stuff like that. Like, oh, there's probably going to be a time buddy, limit. friend, confidant, admirer. Yeah, the, like, this is absolutely a Persona mechanic. So, Pinpoint Strike can now, now cannot be miss, uh, cannot miss or be dodged. However, it can no longer apply Sunder. Will we get any characters beyond just the immediate family? Oh, absolutely. We have to. I mean, my bet is we might even fill out this entire bottom bar. Mm -hmm. See how there's different character slots? Oh, well, oh, so we're only with Griffith right now. Yeah, because we haven't met anybody else. Town. This screen displays your list of all constructible buildings and your current resource pool. One thing these resources use for both construction and crafting items would be smart about spending them, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does that mean the sisters are never going to face combat? They might not be combat characters. They might purely be like, uh, you know, assistants. Okay, uh. con 
let's see. Uh, construction of new buildings can be ordered through selecting an appropriate action in your castle. After being constructed, each building can be upgraded to higher levels, which is an important requirement to progress in a character's personal now, bond. my question is, when we do build everything up, is this... What was his name? Cursey? Something? Crucy. Crucy? Doesn't he just to be like, okay... Now that you've been up, it's all mine now. I and then, I mean, I bet part of the story is finding out that he's lying to us about how much we owe. Mm -hmm. Hell, we might not even owe him anything. Right. Okay, so this is the building's current level. Zero means it's yet to be constructed. Left click on the building's... Uh, on the icon to see the construction oh, upgrade yeah, those costs. are the ruined buildings. Okay, so we have Town Square. Placeholder in Pier, Merchant House, Pathfinder Study, Smithy... Okay, so if I want to upgrade the town square, we need more components, more gemstones, and 500 gold. And we do have 500 gold, but that's what we just what we started off with. Yep. Pier. So yeah, all of these are going to require components, gemstones, glimmer, mm -hmm. random stuff that we do not have available. We continue to the end. Okay, diplomacy. Whoa, what are th what's this? This is the diplomacy screen. Here oh, you can track your reputation with neighboring... Uh, nations. Like with personal bonds, increasing your reputation will unlock faction unique faction benefits such as perks, faction reinforcements, Ooh. and even party members. Ooh, I want to see what the races are. Okay, so we've got... So there's like these, what? Are they like ice... Ice giant ladies? People? Yeah. Well, there's the sun people that we heard about yeah, earlier. Yeah, the sun people. Uh, samurai dwarves and probably like kind of desert Mysterious. warlock. Ever, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, if Wait, we... Valen, the rebel prince, Esther, the bold Mac machinist, yep. Henrietta, the agent of the Mystir, and Mufune. <laughs> that's, that's, he's probably based off of Toshiro Mufune, one of my oh, yeah, favorite probably. actors that was like in all the Akira Kurosawa films practically. I, I'm leaning for these two factions on the bottom. If only. Oh, these are elves. Valen, the Rebel Prince. Oh, they they are elves. Yeah, they're seafaring elves. Okay, can you just read his description? Or I can read the description. The Pirate King of Merware. Oh, so they're like sea elves. Yeah. Because Mare. Yeah. Okay, himself. Captaining the ship known as the Eskyros. While countless absurd tales about Valen tend to overshadow the truth, he is clearly something of an oddity among elves, for he seems to prefer the company of humans to his own kind. Or as Mafune is. Stubborn like an old ox and crotchety like the quarter note, the venerable Mafune of the Dragonfly clan is personally raised at least three generations of emperors. Though he may be a bit hard to get along with, his martial prowess remains second to none. So, samurai dwarves? Yeah. That's so atypical, but interesting. Let's see. So, stash of elven trinkets, so they have summoning items. Okay, I want to know what the machinist people are. Oh, yeah. Okay, Esther the Bold Machinist. Okay. Any sufficiently advanced technology is all but magic in name. To Esther, the universe is more than just some abstract force. It is a challenge waiting to be subdued with the glorious might of machinery. And truthfully, if someone can ever hope to achieve that, she would be a good candidate. And lastly, lastly we have Henrietta, the Agent of Mystere. Okay. The times are changing, crumbling the empires of old, and Henrietta is... Here to make sure such a fate won't befall Lord Dramar. A uh, Lord of it's Lord Dramar. Yeah, Lord okay. Dramar. Well spoken, well traveled, and deadly regardless of protocol. This diplomat slash inquisitor will not pull any punches. Ooh, that's a good perk. Zeal. Plus thirty turn shields per turn. That's kinda nice. I always like it when elves aren't just humans with pointed ears. I like oh, yeah. it when they have bright no, they colors. Look, they look or... cool. This is actually a really nice style. Uh, I really dig what they've done. And then these are, holy crap. Oh, oh, oh. I'll set you on this later. Oh. You can you can have your episode where you just record the lore. Oh. So I know you want to go to the end, but we're actually going to have to do that on the next episode. Because oh. otherwise this episode is going to go on for two. So I really like this game. It's 25 bucks. It's gorgeous. If you guys like uh, Fire Emblem or probably closer to maybe a Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, then you'd probably really enjoy this one. Obviously, we haven't seen a whole lot of combat. We haven't seen really how far, like, the perk and the leveling system and stuff goes. Uh, but I'm excited to play more. So, I guess with this, uh, if you guys like this episode in any way, shape, or form, 
Leave us a like, helps more than you know, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe because I definitely want to play through this. This seems awesome, and I really, really adore the visual style. So I guess with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.